praise God. It's been such a blessing to be with you all evening. And I'm just so, um, yeah, so privileged to, to be part of what God's doing here. There's very much a sense of, you know, God is amongst us and hearing. We have an audience with the Lord. And so I'm just really encouraged and thank you very much for the opportunity to, to be here and to agree with all that you're praying. Um, so I'm very conscious of time and already we're already over time. So I will uh, not share everything I was going to share. Um, but I would like to just share a few things. And um, so let me just move straight into into that, if you will. Um, so just part of the grace God has given to me is to is in the prophetic um, mantle. So there is a word which I received and have spoken this um, a few years before for East Africa and also for for Kenya. I'm going to read part of that and then also some some uh, things that the Lord has been uh, showing me uh, regarding this meeting, well, for this meeting tonight. So, But before I share those thoughts and prayers, um, I just want to share part of the prophecy because I feel in my spirit there's a quickening around this. And um, so let me share. For 400 years, the Lord says, my purpose for these people has been hidden. For 400 years, my purpose prepared. Then I heard angels call out, the fountain, the fountain, the fountain is flowing, but where shall it fall? And I was taken in a vision to a high place, like the edge of a cliff, and I saw a large river that was flowing in full flood. And as it flowed, it was like a fountain being poured out over the edge of a cliff, a water full of great power, yet its water was not found upon the earth. I could see that this fountain was the source of great power and contained much life and blessing within it. So I asked, Lord, please let this fountain restore this land and bring new life and blessing to the people. And he replied, let them prepare to receive, for I will not hold back my blessing for this land and my people here. Let them know this, that though their past is in darkness and concealed, and though their past has taken much from them, their future belongs to me. And I have not yet finished what I have started here. I know their future and the plans I have for them, says the Lord. Take note, I will make their weakness to be their strength. From many peoples they are formed, from different tribes I have gathered them together to display my glory through them. Today I declare a new day. Today let them forget the past and look unto me who holds their future. I will unite their hearts together with mine so that in me and through me the river shall flow through this land and beyond these borders to be a blessing throughout Africa and a source of power that will sustain and enable my bride to arise and shine in these last days. For in her, my glory is kept hidden. But in the days to come, she shall be clothed in new garments and will sing a new song. Awake, my beloved, awake. I will remove your shame and be a shield around you. I will fight for you so that whoever comes against you comes against me. That was a word I very much quickened in my heart now for Kenya. And so I wanted to share that. But let me also share a few other things. And I want to pray a prayer of repentance also. As a British civilian, I know this is prayer has been prayed before, but I feel to pray it again tonight. Pray for, as a civilian of this nation, for all injustice and sins committed against the nation of Kenya and its people. Lord, I ask on behalf of my nation that you would revoke all legal rights the enemy has gained against the UK and against Kenya because of the sins committed by our fathers. 
I ask for the blood of Jesus to be applied against the heavenly record. That the blood was shed for the forgiveness of sin. So that all accusations brought by our adversary in your courts be expunged from the record. And let the full destiny written in the book of Kenya shall not be detained anymore because that which has hindered has now been removed out of the way. And I saw title deeds of Kenya with its signature removed and given to the bride on the land for she is authorized to transact that which is decreed in heaven. The Lord said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Therefore, says the Lord, whatever you bind on Kenya shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on Kenya will be loosed in heaven. The Lord says Kenya shall flourish. Pruning shall cause new fruit to grow. I will cut away that which has brought pain and suffering to this land. All branches that do not bear fruit shall be removed and destroyed. I heard the Lord say the root stock is good. But that which is grafted in by man shall wither and neither bud nor blossom. And I saw a righteous tree in Kenya with branches spread far and wide to bring blessing to the nation and her sisters. For no alliance between heaven and earth can ever be made outside of a covenant instigated by the Lord. The blood secures that covenant. And I heard the Lord say, you have bled for me. And I have remembered my covenant with you. For I cannot ignore the blood which is shed. When it cries for vengeance, I will come as judge. But when it calls for mercy and forgiveness, I will come as Savior. Behold, a new song shall be heard in this land from those who have wept before me. And they shall dance like a warrior in unison with my spirit and lead out those who cannot see. I call forth the bride in Kenya to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I declare though darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the peoples that the Lord shall arise over you and his glory be seen upon you. Let the nations come to your light, O Kenya, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. I pray, Lord, that Kenya shall take her place in the days to come. As Lord, as we see at this time, nations wrestle with powers unleashed. I pray that Kenya's territory shall not be breached, that the ancient boundaries of this land shall be upheld. We pray that the bride on the land shall turn back the battle at the gate. I pray, Lord, that Kenya shall be a nation of refuge in the days to come. I pray that the tyranny and terror brought by migrants in the past shall not deny Kenya from her gift as a place of safety a place of provision and a place of restoration for many. I pray that Kenya shall have indeed a prophetic voice in East Africa 
Africa and the nations of the world. She shall fulfill her destiny in God. She shall be a chauffeur nation that by my spirit I will breathe upon her still. And she shall yet speak forth the mysteries and the glory of God to prepare a highway of holiness for the nations to come and to pass through. I declare and decree tonight that Kenya shall fulfill her destiny, that, Lord, you have heard our prayers. You have heard our cries, Lord, as we have accounted, Lord, and reckoned before you from from district and county to county, oh God, thanking you, Lord, for the redemptive gift and Lord, which is prevalent across the nation from north, south and east and west. We pray and we give assent to your decrees tonight, oh God, that which the enemy has purposed for evil, you have intended for good, that your destiny shall not be usurped for Kenya. That she shall arise in these days in a glorious new robe and a song and an anthem, O God, that reflects her heart of worship and glory unto you, O God. Let the nations behold and see that which you are doing here within the borders of Kenya. Lord, we give you praise and glory for you, O God, have destined that Kenya shall be of light. And we thank you, Lord, the promise that you gave to your people, Israel. I hear you say also tonight that the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you in seven. The Lord will fight for you. His zeal is aroused and he will not delay. Thank you, Lord. So I hand over to, I believe, Rachel.